The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this Sunday is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. And I would invite you to pause this video and to read this reading from your own Bible or by following the link you'll find in the description of this video. This week in our passage from Matthew, chapter 18, Jesus acknowledges the inevitability of conflicts within any group, whether it's a small, as small a group as two or three people or larger. And he offers a blueprint for resolving such conflicts to maintain harmony within the new type of community that he came to proclaim. Our reading fits within the larger context of this chapter of Matthew's Gospel, in which Jesus is imparting general guidance on how his disciples should interact within their community. Earlier in the chapter, he had emphasized the importance of welcoming and assisting others, particularly the vulnerable and the lost. And the subsequent part of the chapter, following our reading, delves into the significance of showing mercy and forgiveness to others generously. Jesus intends for his followers to exemplify the good news, not only through individual actions, but also through their communal life as Christians. This entire chapter underscores the qualities required such as good intentions, good works, understanding, and forgiveness, all to build the type of relationships and community that align us with God's intentions. Today's passage begins with Jesus helping his disciples and the early followers establish a strong community shaped by the loving relationships he encourages them to cultivate. Then, Jesus motivates them by highlighting that as they work towards living faithfully in community, they will unmistakably experience God's presence and power. Now, similar to contemporary society, the Jewish community of Jesus' time experienced internal divisions and disagreements. The religious factions appear in our Gospel readings, often challenging Jesus and his followers' new teachings because they challenged their earthly power structures. However, in the initial verses of our passage today, Jesus is concentrating on strengthening the unity of his own followers in the face of internal division and conflict. In the three, first three verses, he provides his followers with a simple and straightforward approach to addressing tensions and mending strained relationships, emphasizing accountability to one another. Jesus instructs his community to set an example for the world as a community whose members are constantly striving for reconciliation and unity. The divine power that arises from harmonious community is affirmed by Jesus in the final two verses of our reading, where he states, Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. These verses underscore that when two followers of Jesus reach a consensus, God's presence is manifest. God's power becomes evident in a community then shaped by the good news, much like the beautiful harmony of a two-part song. Singing together as a group symbolizes the potent unity within a community. It necessitates active listening, using one's voice, and a commitment to working together. We know this from practice, don't we? Singing hymns has been an integral part of our religious practices for centuries because it unites us in breath and rhythm, just as a harmonious community operates together in sync. Now, September at St. Mark serves as a tangible expression of the power and significance of community. Last week, we reflected on our deep connections with all of God's creation as a part of our celebration of the seasons of creation through prayer, thought, and song. 
And next Sunday, we're posed to celebrate our parish's 70-year presence in Brantford as we have proclaimed the gospel, worshiped, and engaged in good work in our broader community. Together with our broader human family and within our church community, we have achieved remarkable feats and undertaken significant tasks. Even though the challenges lie ahead in caring for the planet and in nurturing, nurturing our parish family. Acknowledging our past, anticipating our future challenges reminds us that God's community is a potent force for transformation and restoration. Today's reading underscores that our care for others, our words, and our actions are most impactful when we are in agreement like the harmonious notes that combine to create a beautiful chord. May our community be united in love for one another and for all of God's creation. I'd now like to invite you to join with me in prayer as we pray for the church, our world, our community, those in need, and those who have departed. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together in one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for the church. We pray for Todd, Bishop of Huron, Anne, our Metropolitan, Linda, our Primate, Chris, National Indigenous Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. In our Diocese of Huron, we pray for the parishes in the Lambton Deanery, for their clergy and people. Bless your church and all who hunger and thirst. Nourish us richly with your word and meal, and send us as signs of your living presence in the world. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Throughout the season of creation, we continue to pray for the well-being of the earth and all its creatures. You instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how to best care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. Bring forth an abundant harvest from the fields, orchards, and gardens this year. Renew fields that will soon lie fallow. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Heal and comfort those we hold in our hearts and those who have asked for our prayers. In our own parish this week, we pray especially for John, Megan and Adam, Diane and Dawn, Shirley, Jim, Elizabeth, Jocelyn, Kathy, Odile, Kylie, Eric, Denise, Edith, Doreen, Betty, Lena, Elaine, Karen, Brian, Barb, Alex, Vicki, Evelyn, Eva, Miriam, Max, Annette, and Mary Rose. We also pray for all those in our parish experiencing continuing long-term health concerns, praying especially for Edgar and Janice, Amy, Norma, Charlotte, Roy Ann, Aubrey, Erlina, Claude and Carol, Marie, Kim, Janet, Jan, Florence, Joyce, Charlene, Brandy, and Bud. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Tend to those who are ill and be with those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of finances and resources and that we share those generously. Make St. Mark's a place of hope for those who are in need of our community. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of creation, in your mercy, hear us. Gather together in your Holy Spirit, gracious God and creator of all things, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. 
I invite you now to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to conclude our time together, I will give you God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.